So just a quick video on completing the square. This is going to be part one of this because this is actually uh, something that you're going to see a lot. It's not a technique I think that you use a ton in, in calculus, um, although it is used sometimes, but you're certainly going to see it on the SAT and uh, you're going to see it in other math courses. So let's actually try to get good at this. So just here's a really, here's a quick example. Here's just <clears throat> irrational roots. Um, Keeping in mind that roots means the solution to a, a function, how many times uh, where a, a solution or a root or a zero tells you how many times and where does the parabola cross the x-axis. So we start with this one, and just thought this was an interesting example. It's uh, x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 7. <clears throat> I guess... If I was given this problem the way it is right now, if I had just found this problem, I don't know where I would start. I actually might start by moving this 7 over and getting this, setting this thing to 0 because that's how we solve quadratics. But if I spent a, a second before I did that and asked myself, why did the author give me the problem in this form, it might be a little bit more obvious to me. Because if you remember when we factor, when we factor, right? Forget about the 7 for just a second. When we factor, we ask ourselves a question, what two numbers add up to this, but when you multiply the same two numbers, give us this. So you look at that, and if, so if we factor this, this would factor like this, wouldn't it? I'm, I would factor this way. I'd say, okay, two numbers that add up to negative 10, but when I multiply the same two numbers, give me positive 25. I might go, you know what, that's x minus 5. Sorry. That's x minus 5 times x minus 5 equals 7. Okay, so I'm asking myself, why did the author give me this? And then, well, x minus 5 times x minus 5, right? 5 times 5 is 5 squared. 9 times 9 is 9 squared. x times x is x squared. So this times this is that squared. So this is x minus 5 squared. And it still equals my 7 over here, doesn't it? <clears throat> so from there, I mean, I hope hopefully that you have some technique here that I see this thing is squared here, so I'm going to try to undo this square by taking the square root, and if I take the square root of one side, right, the, the rules of uh, equality in algebra uh, force us to do the same thing to both sides. So the square root of x minus 5 quantity squared is just x minus 5, right? And this is really, really crucial here because we don't talk about it enough, but if you think about, let's take something that's easier, like 25, like the square root of 25 or something, the square root of 25 of course, right, what is the square root of 25? And probably you said 5, but if you thought about it, you might have said positive 5 or negative 5, right? Because negative 5 times negative 5 also equals 25, and positive 5 times positive 5 is equal to 25. So there are actually two solutions here, aren't there? <clears throat> so the answer here is this. The answer here to this question is, Right? This is actually me solving this piece right here. I know it's going to be positive or negative, whatever that value is, isn't it? So in the same way, this negative, this negative, positive, positive. This negative right here is this one here. I'm saying the pos one, possible <laughs> one possible solution is negative 5, and the other one is positive 5, right? So... These negatives are, account for the fact that it could be negative 5, and this positive up here accounts for the fact that it could be positive 5. So this is actually me accounting for two separate numbers. So I'd solve this algebraically, right? I'm going to add positive 5 to both sides, aren't I? But I, I'm going to have to solve this twice. I'm going to have x is equal to 5, right, plus square root 7. And this is calculator math. This is definitely calculator math, and I haven't done it. Uh, but the other solution is x equals 5. And stay with me, please. Please, please, please. Minus, right? This here's minus. Minus the square root of 7. So you see this, and you're like, oh, my God, what, what, what just happened? We're accounting for the fact that there are two solutions here. Okay, that gets us about halfway through the time I allotted for this video. So let me just do one quick question on this, and I'd like to prove this thing out. So here, I'd like to solve this, right? So we're gonna, now we're going to use the complete the square method. And the reason I did the first example is because to use the complete the square method, 
one side of the equation must be a perfect square. So complete the square method. And this is not going to be bad at all. It just looks kind of like this. Um, so let's solve this. Solve x squared minus 14x plus 3 equals negative 10. And let's pretend, if you don't mind, <clears throat> that we've moved this around and done everything we could do, and we just can't quite get it figured out. So, uh, because this actually is factorable, and I'll prove that to you in a, at the very end. But let's pretend that it's not. Uh, let's pretend that we can't see that it is. So one method that we could do is we could use complete the square. And the first thing you would do is just isolate the values that have x in them. So I'll get rid of this 3. We'll get... Now we have x squared minus 14x equals negative 3. And if you're asking me, why are you doing this? I'm pretending with you that I've given up on every other, every other possibility. I'm like, you know what? I have to try some different method to find my answer. So now I'm going to try to use complete the square as a method. So the way that you would do that is, one, divide. Divide B, that's a B, divide B, like boy, divide B by 2. B, remember, it's AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0. So what does that give us? That gives us negative, therefore, negative 14 divided by 2 equals negative 7. 2. Square the result. So negative 7 squared is equal to 49. Yes, and then lastly, add that result to both sides. You're going to see what, it's, what happens in a second, but it's actually pretty cool, I think. So let's see where that leaves us. All right, so we have x squared minus 14x, right? We got 49 here. I'm going to add that to both sides, plus 49 negative 13 plus 49 over this side also is 36. Now, if you take a quick look, now this is perfectly factorable, isn't it? Two numbers that add up to negative 14 that multiply to give us positive 49 is, neg is x minus 7 and x minus 7 equals 36, right? Well, if you look at it, if I did this, this is the same as x minus 7 quantity squared is 36, right? This is the thing that we are trying to get to, we see that we have this, so we're going to take the square root of both sides, right? And we get x minus 7 equals, I wonder if you remembered, plus or minus the square root of 36, right? And what is the square root of 36? It's 6, so the answer is plus or minus 6. So now what we do is, we would do this, remember we have plus or minus, so plus, so the first thing we do is, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So it's 7. First thing I'm going to do is plus 6. There's x equals 13. And then finally, I'm going to do it the other way now, right? Because I had to answer this question twice. So we have x equals 7 minus 6. Sorry. Minus 6 x so there are two solutions, and I just in the for the cause of fairness, I just want to look at this really quickly because this thing was factorable, wasn't it? Right? It was, right? It was x squared minus fourteen x. Man, it's like senile or something. right? Plus 3 equals negative 10. Just because somebody's going to notice this and say, are you kidding me? I could have done this another way. I get it. I don't know why this offer was exam uh, this, uh, this is the problem that was offered, but add 10 to both sides. And this is, you know, x squared minus 14x plus 13 equals 0. This is pretty factorable. Two numbers that multiply to give us negative 13, but when we add them gives us uh, negative Negative 14 would be x minus 13, x minus 1, 
right? And then, so these are our factors, right? These are our factors, and our solutions would be, right? X equals 13, or X equals one of the solutions. But I have to admit to you, there are tons of times where I miss the obvious, and when you miss the obvious, maybe you're taking the SAT, and you're like, what am I gonna do? Well, you have to have some different methods to draw from, so this is one of them. So I'm not be trying to beat up the fact uh, using complete the square. It's something that you'll definitely have the opportunity to use. All right, good job, you guys.